Welcome to Get Shirty, the podcast where we ask our guests about the things in life that just never fail to irritate and get them all shirty. The chat focuses on home, work and going out, but could go anywhere. And it's not all doom and gloom as each guest gets a made-to-measure shirt which they design, so we talk about that too. Funny that, us being tailors. How can it be episode four already? Well, it is, and our guest is Gary James, actor, writer, and presenter. Uh, Gary actually grew up just around the corner from our shop here in Southborough, Tunbridge Wells, uh, before moving to London to pursue his acting career. Along with acting, Gary was also one of the presenters on the groundbreaking 80s music show, The Tube, where he interviewed the stars of the time, and we discussed some of the highs and lows that that brings during our chat. We also chat 80s aftershave, the joys of trains and why you shouldn't do Gary a surprise party, amongst other things. So here we go. Three tailors, two mics, one guest and a host of irritation. Let's get shirty. Welcome, uh, Gary, to uh, the Git Shirty podcast. Hooray! Hooray! Yeah. Yeah. It's so, lovely to be here. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure to have you here and also to, to do a bit of tailoring for you as well. We're going to tell you a nice shirt. It's marvellous. I, I can't believe that somebody's going to make me look fabulous in something um, bespoke. So well, sometimes it's anyone's done anything bespoke, bespoke. to me. <laughs> Well, you look pretty fabulous from where we're sitting. Well, it's very kind of you to say so. Oh, and uh, gosh, this has started off well, hasn't it? It has, I know. Applause yeah. and, and compliments yeah. within the first two minutes. Beautiful. That doesn't often happen. If only all of life was like that. That's, mm, that's what yes. I think. That'd be, mind you, that would probably be slightly disconcerting if everywhere you went, you know, just walking into the shop, you got a little... Oh, would you quite like know, that? I quite like that. I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, oh, right. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Twenty Rothmans, please. Hey. Hey. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Actually, it doesn't sound too bad. So <laughs> we we could go for that. Well, maybe if we uh, if we have the pleasure of meeting again, we'll just we'll that, give you a that little round be, of applause. That would be much appreciated. Yeah. Um, yes, th- let's let's go with that. So the idea of today's podcast or the, or the chat today is to um, sort of talk about, maybe get off our chest a few of the things in life which we find slightly annoying at times, hence the Get Shirty name of the podcast. And, but, and we tend to look at sort of three areas on that, the work, home and going out or the, as the Mars Bar view of it all, work, rest and play. Yeah. So why don't we start off with it from a work point of view. So what are the things in previous working life or your now working life where that have just irritated you to the point where you think you might want to well, get them I off think your chest? You, uh, mm, that's a tough one. I think probably from the, from the acting side, I can't bear working with mumblers. Right. Um, <laughs> I've really laid it out on the on yeah. the slab very early here, haven't I? But that's good. But there's a it, there's a back in my day, um, if you trained in the the theatre, you, you, being audible is probably. I mean, yeah. let's be honest. If if you can't, if your audience can't hear you, uh, that's probably not a very good thing. But then, yeah. uh, as as years gone by, and a, a lot of younger people have done more TV and come up through that side. Uh, it's a very different style of uh, uh, of delivery, and there's this dreadful tendency for people to mumble. Mumblers, and, and also I think a lot of people that that are doing um, lifelike performances. So if you're if you're doing stuff that's kind of angst filled, yeah. have you there? They tend to keep it very very low and what have you, which is fine if you're in row A. Right. Yeah. But if you're any further back, no one's going to hear you. And I, and I saw a. I went to see Blythe Spirit wow. a few years back, and 
it drove me nuts that right. um, my partner who was sat next to me, I think we were in row J, and he kept saying to me, I can't hear them. Oh. And they were mic'd up. Right. I mean, we never had mics. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> um, uh, and that, so that drives me nuts, yeah. working with people. Mumblers. That, that, yeah. Oh, and I don't like, um, how can I put this, the stuck-up types either. Right. Okay. Oh, gosh. So you don't, you have, don't have to few... name names? Or, no, no. Oh, don't know. worry. I'm not, I'm not doing that. <laughs> um, Damn it. But I'd, I've had some tough times on, in the past with people who think, well, because you're famous, uh, that um, people should behave differently around right, you. Right, OK. Um, That's um, entitlement. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look, I'm from High Brooms, yeah. so you know. I know. It's like no, Tunbridge Wells. Tunbridge Wells, Not, yes. But but uh, so yeah, I never never kind of got off on that. And and the, when I was doing the tube, the first live interview on live TV I ever did was with Andy Summers. Right. And from the police. From the police, and he'd had a ding dong with the producers. Right. Uh, before we went on air, because he wanted. I think about 12 minutes or something like that, 12 or 14 minutes, something like that. All right, so to he talk was about demanding yeah, a he was certain amount of time. Absolutely. Oh, really? He, he, wow. he had just done this album with Robert Fripp called I Advance Masked. Check it up. All right. And um, he wanted to talk about the artwork right. for like a quarter of an hour. Well, this program, didn't, we didn't work like that. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Three or four minutes at the most. Yeah. And um, so he was in a foul mood all when right. he sat down opposite me, I'd never met him from Adam. All right. But this is my first live TV. So this this was your first very interview. first interview, wow. live <laughs> TV, and he just kind of looked down his nose at like, "Who are you, you little gobshite?" <laughs> and um, uh, and gave me what I thought at the time was a pretty rough ride. Right. Um, what he didn't realise was is that quite frankly I, I couldn't have cared less yeah what, whatever All right. he'd come out with oh look and there it is there's the artwork there's the artwork Last yeah uh, I, he I, wanted I, to talk about that for 15 minutes I was I'm not sure you could <laughs> I mean it's not don't try. get me wrong it's quite I mean it's it's, it's very it's nice, nice. <laughs> it's very nice yeah it's very nice artwork but um, in my head I was just panicked about getting everything that I'd got planned yeah. For this interview within the short time, yeah, and uh, well, so, yeah, is and it, was, he's probably very nice, you know. <laughs> yeah, I just didn't. I mean, he came on, we did it, and he went off, and that was the last I yeah, ever saw yeah. of him. So, did you have a during that sort of time when you were interviewing all these people? Is there one that you go, well, that was my favourite? Have you got a favourite? Yeah, I've got two. Right, actually, two favourites. One was the Weather Girls. Right. Uh, which we recorded. Uh, and it was very unusual to record. And I think it's because they re the producers realised that once they got me and them together, right. that it was too risky for live TV. Right. I mean, they okay. actually took one interview off me completely and gave it to Muriel instead. Right. Uh, and that was the interview with Divine, because I, I had pestered them to get Divine. I'm like, get Divine, I'm get Divine, yeah, yeah, get yeah. Divine. And then when... It, 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 he did come on the show. We'd all been out boozing the night before. And Div and I had made up the... Uh, at that point, I thought I was still going to do the interview with him. Right, OK. And we'd made up what was going to happen. And I was going to outrage him. And he was going to beat me up on, right, on screen. Right, I really And wow. I think <laughs> they got wind of that and thought, we can't possibly we can't. let that go out. So yeah, they yeah. took it off and gave it to Muriel because, instead. And Divine was quite sort of notorious at... At the time, anyway, or was this sort of yeah, the yeah, pre notoriety? No, 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 he, he, he was still. I mean, his act was right out there, but right. but, uh, but he was the sweetest, kindest, most right. gentle person that yeah. that that I ever really met in that. that right. was, he was a lovely, lovely guy. Right. Um, uh, but then getting dragged up and out on stage, yeah. and it was a, it was a like Alice Cooper, you know, it was yeah, a, yeah, a yeah. beast unleashed. Um, and so, but when I did the Weather Girls one, I think they thought there might be a repeat of that. Right. Okay. Which was very unfair on them because they were they weren't like they weren't like that at all. They were, no. they were Martha Martha Wash and Isora. They were lovely, but we did push the boat out a bit right. because I knew it was being recorded, and right. we started talking about Michael Jackson's Willie. 
um, <laughs> and the audience loved it. I mean, we we. I think I was because I said, you know, had they met him and and what is, I'd heard that some the bits were dropping off him because of the thriller video, you know. Oh, right. So it kind of went in a very bizarre area. And if you watch, if you ever do find that interview, you can see where the edits are. Right. <laughs> But they were terrific. That was good fun. And did they perform on the show as yeah, well? Yeah, they did. They, it's they Raining did. Men. They did. Oh, how brilliant. Yes, they did. It's Raining Men. Uh, and it was, it, that was a fun time. So, yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. But I've never been a huge... I didn't like 80s fashion. So right. Uh, I mean, I looked a complete Burke in the stuff that I was mincing around in at the time. Um, uh, I came on... I did, I did a real... Oh, God, I've just suddenly thought I did a re Thames Television right. did a schools program in it on the tube on make the making of the tube right and they were filming rehearsals in the afternoon and in one scene of it if I remember rightly I come down a staircase to do a link and I'm wearing this like Jason King Japanese sort of <laughs> I, I think it was a what do you call them things with a belt round? Like, like a kimono. Oh, like, oh, like a smoking jacket. Like a, smoke, a smoking jacket. I, to this day, I've no idea where I got that That's from. That's proper Jason King as well. That yeah. Be, yeah. Uh, and I caught sight of it. And I thought, God almighty, what was I thinking? Yeah. Uh, and there's probably an awful lot of people that wore stuff back then that would look at it now and think, well, what was I thinking? Yeah, I, see, in 85, oh. 86, I had a proper... Andrew Ridgely flick, like a really, a rip. <laughs> Wasn't one. that bordering on a mullet? Uh, yeah, I didn't have the bit. I had a little bit of the back, but I what I used to do was get the hairdryer underneath it at the front <laughs> so that it really curved up and dropped down, and then I'd hairspray it to within an inch of its life. But the trouble was, when I went out in the wind, what it did was it the whole thing moved as one. Did he go flock of seagulls? No, no, I never, you, I never noticed never that. that the, yeah, no. But the whole thing just used to lift up and then oh. replace itself. So it never went out of place other than in one lump. So by the time we've I all left, got our 80s thing. Yeah, by the time, I think the best thing about it, the, only, the, the best thing I remember about the fashion zones, I finally managed to get a flat top. Right. Which is something I always wanted. Proper, um, with, a, with a giant comb with a spirit level in. It's, it tip, was flat. You could have rested a tray of drinks on it. Really um, nice. I, I was so proud of that. But yeah. then I started to lose my hair not long, probably because of all the bleaching I used yeah, to do yeah, with that yeah. peroxide. Do you remember yeah. that? Oh, yeah, I do remember peroxide that. Peroxide 60 or 40 or something, and yeah. it was blue and yeah. burnt, burnt your head. Yeah. I had a... Shaved, almost shaved head and then a long straight fringe as well at one point which I dyed blonde oh, not a f did you have a fellow key? Okay. did you did you have a half one no I, di I didn't I should have done <laughs> I should have done and if I could do it now <laughs> which I can't but uh, I, did, did you ever meet I, Phil, Phil no I, it's, I knew you were going to ask yeah, yeah. uh, funny enough I didn't and, and yet Human League were that was around about that time yeah, as well yeah. I think so yeah, about 82 been, to 84 it? somewhere around yeah no, I, I, there's quite a few people around that everybody would assume that I must have come across when I was doing the show that I didn't. And he, yeah. they're, they're one group I never, I never right. met. No. Was it a good experience doing the show? No. no. Oh, <laughs> no really? <laughs> it, it, was, it was not. No. So, uh, 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 well, I... You know, well, you can say if, if we could once once we've uh, we finished recording, feel free to spill spill the beans. Then it was you... kind of nerve wracking in a way that I, I I always get a a thrill out of going on stage at, right at, at, as an actor and and I get a buzz out of that. I didn't get a buzz out of doing live TV. I think because half the time I was so terrified. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I didn't want that to show. And it was properly uh, live. Uh, yeah, properly, it was proper. Oh God, yes. No delay well, or look. The tube got taken off the air in the end because Jules. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Jules yeah. came out with um, a "Don't be a groovy fucker" or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and as a result, that was one step too far, and they, the the show ended. But I'd gone by that point. Anyway. Right. But, uh, during the course of that, doing that show, which I only did it for two and a half years, so it's not like it's I did it for a long time to do live telly. But but uh, I met two particular heroes of of mine well I met three actually right. three heroes of mine 
And I always say, you know, when you meet a hero, that it, it can either come crashing down mm. or, or, or it will be wonderful. And I'm pleased to say that in all three cases, it, it was a positive experience. Oh, great. The one was Barry Humphreys, who I'd actually met previously. All right. Uh, briefly, uh, he came and did one of the Midsummer Night's Tubes, which was the five hour live specials. Okay. We'd, I did two of those, the first two. Um, and he did Les Patterson and he oh, did Dave right. Medna in that. And I spent more or less all afternoon with him in, in his right. dressing room, talking with him and, uh, uh, and watching him get made up. And uh, uh, he was amazing, uh, really generous and, yeah. and a great. And Eartha Kitt. All right. I spent a long time with her as well, yeah. uh, talking to her. And I'll come back to her in a minute. And the third one um, was Mickey Finn from T-Rex. Right. It was Mark Boland had previously died in 1977. So I get it finding Mickey Finn from T-Rex, who had never given an interview before. Right. was a bit of a find. So that was, that was cool. But Eartha, um, she, when we did, she, when she came to do her number, she was expecting to sing live to a backing track. When she came to do her bit, they put the wrong backing track. They put a 12 inch mix that she'd never heard before. Oh no. And, she, and it had a vocal already on it. Oh no. So when she came down the steps and what have you, a lot of people thought that this was a, a bad performance from hers, but in fact, there was a reason for it. She was completely caught out. She had to mime to a version she'd never heard before. And then, anyway, I'm down there with Steve Grant from Tight Fit, supposed to be dating, ha uh ha, -huh. right. um, to do an interview as with her. Tight Fit as in in the jungle? Fantasy Island and um, yeah, yeah, Lion yeah. Sleeps Tonight. Right. Yeah, and Steve was a, was a mate of, uh, of mine. And uh, anyway, yeah. so she comes down after this disastrous performance and I'm thinking, oh my God, I've got to interview her now. Yeah. And she had a face like thunder when she, she came and sat down. We had this chaise long thing. And um, I thought, this interview is going to be a car crash. Yeah. It's just not. And we started the interview and I saw her. I, I remember I'd spent all afternoon with her, getting to know her and talking with her. We got on like a house on fire. And I remember looking at her and she looked at, I asked her a question. She looked me in the eye and I thought, this is the point at which she is either going to eviscerate me yeah. or she'll come down. And I saw her eyes relax. Right. And we had fun with the, with the interview after that. But that was a really tense moment. Yeah, I wouldn't want to go, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't want to go through that again. So, yeah, yeah. did I enjoy it? No. So if there were a set of scales, do, do the positives that you got from it outweigh the the less enjoyable bits or uh, you know how, how do you think no, back on it in general well like, i kind uh, of blotted it out for, for so right. long until i wrote wrote my my autobiography which, which sounds so pomp even when i say it now sounds pompous you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah was he you know what does yeah. he think he's writing his story but i didn't do it for that i did i wrote about the tube bit because i knew it was something a hook yeah that i could probably yeah, sell yeah. some copies off the back yeah, of, but yeah. I didn't write the book for that. I wrote it as a as a tribute mainly to an old friend of mine. Right. So uh, I found writing about it quite difficult because I had to revisit some of it to remember what what went yeah. on. Yeah, and it's I suppose in life with you know without getting too um, sort of philosophical about it in life we sort of let the good things bubble up, and we the bits about it that we liked we sort of. It's it's easy to recall those things because they're a, they're a nice bit, but the sort of the less enjoyable parts of our lives, I suppose, we tend not to want to revisit them, unless unless we have to. So yeah, can, I think yeah, you're right. There's a kind of there's a kind of intensity about that. Um, God, I nearly said show business. It's all right. That's old fashioned, but 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 to the entertainment business, there's an intensity to yeah. bits of it. It's bursts of extreme intensity right. and then come downs and, and the come downs to that can either be positive or they can be yeah, really yeah, really yeah, bad yeah. so if something goes really badly you live that moment over and over and over, over. again yeah. in your mind and it becomes quite a negative thing yeah um and that it doesn't really matter what mode whether it's television radio stage you, you everyone has their mm. their they're good stuff and, and do, bad. Do you find when you're doing theatre, though, if you have one of those moments, 
that you know you've got a chance to do to do it again. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, I'm doing X amount of performances of this. I know I can write well, that wrong. Kind of a bit, yeah, and no, you're right. Fit, fit, yes, is the answer to that. Right. But I think theatre is a, uh, a different, it's a different thing every night anyway. Yeah. So like television, once it's done, that's it, it's gone. Yeah, whatever, yeah. whatever, it, whatever cock-ups you've had, whatever great times you've had, there it is, it's done, yeah. it's there forever. And you, you know, uh, you, you, ha you have to pick apart and deal with that. Yeah. Theatre, yes, you're right. The, yeah. next, the next night, because the audience reaction is going to be different, you've got a chance to do it again. And, uh, and the experience it. is different yeah. for everybody. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's probably why I've always preferred theatre to yeah. television. Well, it's um, and it's an instant thing, I yeah. imagine, with theatre. Yeah, I suppose live TV gave you that as well. But is it like a, a an instant? Um, well, you get instant feedback, don't you? Yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah, but in. <laughs> In television, I found people will tell you something was terrific, even if it wasn't. Right. Uh, I don't ever remember anybody giving negative feedback, right. even though I look back at some of it now and it makes me want to crawl into a, a, into really? a hole and, right. and cover myself up and never come out yeah, again. But, yeah. but pe people do tend to... Uh, flat, and, and, of course, the key is, Mark Boland once, says, once said in an interview... You've got to remember you're not all you're cracked up to be. Right. right. Uh, and because he was one of my heroes, that was a, an expression that I never, I never really forgot. And when I did the, the tube, I would rather have been with the engineering crews and the right. made, than the techies. Um, they were my mates, and I, and yeah, I enjoyed yeah. that experience more than I did actually being in front of the camera. Again, in the entertainment business, it's very easy to get pushed into places that you really don't want to be. Right. Okay. So I was never into drugs, never into drugs. I was never a big drinker. Um, I, I mean, I'm not saying I didn't have my vices, because I, I, I did. That would sure. be a lie. But, but, and I'm certainly not going to talk about that. <laughs> um, but, but it's very easy to get pushed into areas that you can't get out of. Yeah. And uh, I was never into all of that, so yeah. which is probably why I, I didn't <laughs> I didn't last it. <laughs> <laughs> so the sort of home side of things, the the being away from work, being at home, you know, what what are the things? You know, we've had all sorts on this actually, from dishwashers through to. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the very, the very first one. But yeah, is there something like so? You're not at work. You're at home. Yeah. Are there? You know, could be anything. You know, what what are the areas of that that you think? Oh, that I've always found that irritating. Try to get it off your chest. At home, uh, I don't like having to empty the dishwasher. Yeah. That gets on my tit end. <laughs> Um, uh, what else don't I like? Um, dishwashers um, are contentious, aren't they? Dishwashers, yeah, they are, yeah. well, you mentioned it. I, mean, I did, I did, yeah. I probably wouldn't have reached for dishwashers yeah. if you hadn't mentioned that. Um, I, I loathe ironing, which is probably uh, why I, I went for a nice granddad shirt. Yeah, very nice uh, collarless shirt, very perfect. Very nice collarless shirt. Yeah, I don't like ironing. Yeah. <clears throat> so I haven't really got many things that I could say at home that I don't like, right. to be honest. I mean, I really love my little house down where I live now in, yeah. in, in East Sussex, uh, not that far away from here. No. Um, and I'm very yes. happy there. Yeah, being, well, I mean, that's the thing, because you were a local lad. Yeah. To, to here, um, went to just just over there. Yeah, went to school just over there. Yeah, literally yeah. just it's, literally. Yeah, what? stone throw, isn't it, from the shop? Yes, very happy days. It was quite rough then. Yeah, well, yeah people didn't it's... expect very much of us. I don't think yeah, right. us Ridgeway boys and girls. Yeah, we got taken. <laughs> I don't know how many people in. You know when they they take you for job experience. Yeah, we got taken to the abattoir. Nice. There, there's an, <laughs> and even now, when I'm going up to London, when you leave High Brooms and you go towards Tunbridge, if you look down, there's a field on the left-hand side just by the abattoir, which is still there. All right. And in the morning, I'll go by and it's full of sheep. And when I come back in the, in the, you know, at the end of the day, it's empty. <laughs> and, it, and it still upsets me even now. And we got dragged around the abattoir. No, there was nothing going on in there when they took us all around all right, all right. As, as, as school kids. But can you imagine yeah. anyone taking... So that's what they expected of us. They expected us to be... 
uh, abattoir. Sort of earthy workers. abattoir workers and stuff. And uh, therefore I escaped and went up to London as quickly yeah, as yeah. I possibly could before they got me in there with a stun gun. Hates, um, I haven't got very many. Oh, actually. see, that's good. No. Yeah, like uh, having done a few of these, like some people can reach quite readily for the things that I'm uh, the f- The very first uh, person we spoke to, Nigel, he he brought up dishwashers and I, I was with him. <laughs> sort of on the other side of it, actually, <laughs> because we were talking about rearrange, having to rearrange them and not being loaded properly. So there's always those, yeah. so those sorts of things. Or, you know, like for me, like not lions, I very rarely get a lion and I sometimes I quite like a lion, but that's my own fault, you know. But so. I, you're, you're undoubtedly several decades younger than me, but, no, but no, I no, found no. that the that's older... Very, that's very kind of you. <laughs> the older that I get, the less sleep I get. And I mean, I, I tend to wake up at... Well, well, first of all, around about half past four, the cat wakes up yeah. and he wants to go out. So once he starts, that, make, that wakes me up and I never get back to sleep back again. To sleep. Yeah. So I seem to exist... Um, I'm trying desperately not to invoke Margaret Thatcher here because she famously said she only needed four hours, four hours sleep, sleep a night. Uh, and I tend to sort of exist on that too. Yeah. I hope I don't turn into Margaret Thatcher. Yes, please. please. I mean, <laughs> if you do, come back and do the podcast again because, you know... <laughs> I can confidently predict I will not turn into Margaret Thatcher. Yeah, uh, please, please no. don't. So, so, yeah, waking up early... Uh, is that's a bit, but that's not really a home. Thing. Is it a home thing? Well, does that, that count? I suppose it's. Well, I suppose if you do most of your waking up at home, probably. Yeah. You know, I think our rules around what constitutes work, you know, home and and going out, you know, they're jumping off points really. Well, the, the, so the, the you're, home you're thing for me to... is everything that that gels around the home for me is revolves around the cat. Right. Okay. I'm a good cat, cat person. You see, the cat is the boss. Uh, my, and I get that from my mother. She right. always had cats. And um, uh, without a cat, the house is just completely empty. I know there's doggy people who feel the same way about dogs. Yeah, and yeah. I, but I'm like that about the cat. Yeah. So every, everything is about, is he in yet? You know, what's he been up to? Has he, you know, what's he brought in now? Everything is around the cat. Has he had cat. his dinner? Has he had, yeah. 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 Have you fed the cat? Yeah, yeah. you see? So, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You got it. You, have you got a cat? Three, yeah. Uh, well, three cats. See. You yeah. know them. Yeah, I think a home is better with a cat, but I also quite often threaten to get rid of the cat. <laughs> yeah, because of the, everything. Well, they're no, like uh, one of our cats is a naughty cat, and I could do without the, that sometimes. Well, I He's also a, the I've friendliest a, cat, so. I, no. I lost my, my, my last cat, Cecil, very unexpectedly. He was That's a rescue. Great all name my for cats a cat. have been, yeah, they've all been rescue cats. All right, Cecil's um, a great name. Cecil, we rescued from um, Katerine Romney, New Romney, and uh, um, he died very suddenly, and I miss him terribly. Yeah. And we've got another um, rescue cat now called Harvey, a ginger who's naughty. All right. The naughty cat. So, yeah, this is not very really interesting for people, is it? I don't, I think it, well, I. Cats are the most watched thing on the internet. Yeah. So, d- I'd like perhaps... to have interviewed my cat. Would you? Yeah. Yeah. I wish we. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you think? I, I, what sort what of would answers? You say. Well, what, um, so, what would you have asked your cat? Um, I'd have. I'd. A worse, first of all, I'd want to know where he goes. Where yeah. do they go? Well, when they put, go out, people nobody... put GoPros on them now and let yeah. them film as they're. Yeah, I'm not, sure, I'm not sure that's something I'd actually... Well, it'd probably frighten the life out of me if yeah, I saw yeah, where they yeah. go. But, um, but yeah, uh, where do you go? Where do you go and why? And where do you go and why, Cecil, yeah. Harvey, the cat. Yeah, mm. that's good questions. Well, but I suppose uh, that not that one of the beauties of cats as well? That nice mystery that comes with a cat. Where do they, well, you know? Well, we don't do own them, go? really, do we? No. I think they own us. It's, I think it's... And I, I, I feel think privileged to be, you know, yeah. sometimes they're sort of lying there looking at you and you think, um, well, you don't have to be here. Yeah. I mean, if the, if you didn't want to be there, he'd just bugger off. Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, and that, so, that's it, isn't it? Uh, but they do, and, yeah. and I love them for that. They're, so, and yeah. that's one of the things with that. If you leave the door open for a cat, it'll go out and decide to come back. I think a dog will just go, there's an open door, I'm off. Just for the sheer excitement of there being an open door. You know, yeah, that must be quite... Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not not so that, good at coming back. 
No. Yeah. What about for yourself? What about the outside world? Let's let's throw it out. So, what are the niggles uh, right, for okay. you about the outside? Can we talk here? Yeah. Yes. Let's let's be good. People who can't use roundabouts. Okay. Okay. There are certain people that will when I, when the glorious revolution comes the, and they're up against the wall. <laughs> people who can't use round. People who don't indicate. Okay. Oh, that does my head in. So, yeah. what am I supposed to be? Psychic or something. Uh, yeah. that, so that's that's cars dealt with. People that can't <laughs> use roundabouts. People who. So have you noticed yeah. what? Oh God! I wish I'd never started. <laughs> when you come up to a roundabout and somebody stops where they've got clearly got right of way. Yeah. And they just sit there and wait. And then of course, once that person stopped, the whole roundabout yeah. seizes up because yeah. nobody knows where Why, to go or what to do. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And have you got a? A roundabout, I was a roundabout where this happens. No, no, yeah, yeah. Well, a, a particular because I can think of two roundabouts <laughs> in my regular drives that I know every time two things are going to happen. Which one me up? One, there's one roundabout that's got two lanes, which the left hand one is just for going left, that's not for going because there is no right hand turn, it's not for going straight over, it's just yeah. for going left. Yeah, yeah, and people um, pull up there and go straight over from that lane. <gasps> Yeah, exactly. Well, there's, there's that one on the A21 at Amberhurst. That, that, that's famous for that. Oh, uh, yeah, that's that's not yeah, good. The one that then goes down onto Flint. Yep. This is really interesting for people. Right. Yeah, I know that roundabout. Let's do trains. Um, people <laughs> that sit in a bay of four and they sit by the aisle and then cover the rest of the table, what have you, with, with their with stuff. Their stuff. And, yeah. and then a whole load of people get on and people are standing up yeah. and there's empty seats. Yeah. That drives me nuts. Yeah, me too. So, so that's trying stuff. For two reasons. Yeah. One, the person should just move over and go sit here. But also the people who stand up and then don't say, I want to sit in there. So they, those people annoy me as well. Yeah, the, yeah, the, they, yeah. But they shouldn't be put in that position in the no, first place. Because I agree. being British, yeah, I see, agree. we don't sort of like to do that, do we? Yeah. We, we'll just stand there, yeah, yeah. you know. Whether in other countries, somebody would grab you by the collar yeah. and hoik you out, and yeah. uh, you know they, they wouldn't put up with that. He would. I mean, my family's my, my father was Australian, and so I've got family in Australia. Right. And I can tell you now that that would not happen in yeah. Australia. There's no way that people would put up with that. Yeah, yeah. They, um, it just wouldn't happen. But over here, we're sort of we're too polite. Polite. Yeah, British Reserve. Yeah, so, we kind of like people to know we're annoyed, but not actually. John Peast once said, didn't annoyed. he, that, that he can sum up the British with one word, and that's sorry. Yeah, uh, uh, because people won't ask for something. They'll go um, like, if you want somebody to pass the sauce or the salt or something, yeah. instead of saying, "Could you pass the salt, please?" They'll yeah. go, um, uh, "Sorry." Yeah. Uh, yeah, could yeah, you, yeah, uh, yeah. Sorry, uh, and so that sums us up really. I think yeah. we're sorry. Yeah, that's yeah, that's fair. Yeah, <laughs> it, it is fair. I can't, you know. I'd like to say, oh no, I don't think. It, but I think yeah, it's, it's a particular. But do you think the the sort of youth of today are going to be like that? Do you think, or do you think that's well, a generation? Well, thing? I wouldn't have seen that. I wouldn't have thought that I would ever have turned out like that. But I think it kind of gets under your skin. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. I've been a rebel all my life, but I still go. I still kind of go down that path. And then, I, and then I come out of it and think, oh God, did I really, really yeah, did just it, really, what, did I really not say something there? Yeah. I mean, it's a bit like that. You know, the other thing when you're on, when you're on a flight, and somebody, and somebody puts the seat back down in front of you. Yeah. That, or you get on a flight, a daytime flight, you're going somewhere, and the first thing somebody does is put the bloody blinds down. Down. Yeah. And then want to go to sleep. Mm. Um, yes, I cheerfully strangle there. <laughs> so I've got quite a list coming up now. Yeah, I, I'm going to chuck chuck one in for planes, and that's seat kickers. <laughs> well, right. they're probably doing that because you put your seat, seat back. back. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 and the blind. Yeah. So if I'm in steerage, which of course I, I very rarely ever am, yeah. um, and <laughs> I've got my tray flap down, and I'm trying to eat a sausage in a plastic box, yeah. you know, and then somebody goes whoop and puts their seat back. Yeah. 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 You know, and you end up with a sausage on your tire. Yeah. Which you don't want that. Really. Nobody wants that. No. But if you, and especially if your shirt is bespoke, well, quite you right. don't want sauce all over it. No, no, you don't. No, it's, um, yeah. 
uh, a nice bespoke shirt should should be respected and, and source less. In I, fact, I, I, actually, I imagine. well, look. Uh, the next time this happens and I happen to be wearing a bespoke shirt, yeah. I shall stand up and say, excuse me, yes. and show them my bespoke clothing. Yes, you, well, you, yeah. And, and I, I want to, you know, it's the sort of equivalent of getting them stood up against the wall. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, When I, I show them the bespokeness. The bespokeness. You could just hand them one of, or, or take their details and... So I shall be passing these <laughs> on to my tailor, who will be giving you a dressing down yeah, at the, the next opportunity. Yes, quite right too. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and you're going the, the chap uh, yeah. list of unacceptable people. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's um, true. So are you, yeah, are you that, a reader of the chap? Uh, yes, I am actually. Yeah, yeah it's that's a good magazine. The chap, yeah, there, there's, good, there's some good articles in there. Yeah. Um, so yes, I, I do. In fact, actually, I was going to drench myself in flaneur before I came in and then see if you detected the odour. All right. Um, flaneur, ladies and gentlemen, is, a, is, a, is an eau de toilette. Eau de toilette. For gentlemen. Yeah. It's actually surprisingly puffy, actually, <laughs> uh, if I'm honest. It's very flowery and rather camp. Yeah. Uh, and so I thought <laughs> I'll drench myself in that. But actually, I, I didn't in the end. Oh, the other thing that I like to drench myself in is, is tobacco. Right, ah. Which used to be sold, of course, flogged mercilessly by the late, great Peter Wingard. Yeah. Tobacco. Oh, Jason King, yes. Yeah, I haven't... I haven't Have you not heard it? I have, well, no, I've heard of it. I haven't oh, thought about tobacco. It's in. glorious. I come out of the shower and I drench myself in tobacco. Tobacco. I, really, I love that I, uh, aroma. Yeah. Um, it's the sort of acceptable uh, 70s aroma. Yeah. Uh, whereas Brute sort of fell out of... Fashion. Brute did an Old Spice, that was the other one. That was my, my very first aftershave was Old Spice. And I liked it mainly for that little stopper that it had. Do you remember that? It had that you little white... shirt buttons out of there. Yeah, we you could do. Well, the nice. Old Spice old shirt spice buttons. Shirt button, yeah, shirt it buttons. made a really satisfying squeak as you sort of put it back Do you know in. what? When I was at school, uh, over the road... I uh, Just over the road. Uh, we used to... You used to be able to get Brute in little tiny bottles... Sort yeah. of about four or five inches Miniature tall. Miniature ones of the... Miniature ones. Of the... Of the, uh, of the, of the, the pucker scent. Yeah. Had a long sort of neck on yeah, it, Yeah, had a long it? neck yeah. in a green bottle. And it was it came in a hard plastic, clear plastic case. And it was probably horrifically expensive, like 50p or something. Yeah. I mean, you could have bought a single with what that cost. Yeah, yeah. And, and this was the thing yeah. to be um, reeking of yeah. when you went to local discos. When you went to the Dank in Tunbridge, <laughs> or the Tunbridge Team Twenty, or, or Teen and Twenty, yeah. yeah. You see. So, so you'd be there in your in your um, tonic scribes, nice. and your, your your sort of your 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 best outfit, reeking of, of brute. Brute. Yeah. What you'd bought? I think it might have been ninety nine pence actually. That was it? Something Which like was pr pretty. It was a lot of money. Pretty you know. pricey. And who was your brute? Uh, Advert. Uh, who, who was the star of the Brute advert, well, you remember? In those days, it, I don't ever remember it having a face off. I think where they went pear-shaped was when Henry Cooper Henry started Cooper. doing it. And then and Kevin Keegan. And Ke yeah, but Kevin kind Keegan. Because it was uh, very... Splash It All Over. Yeah, that, that was, was Henry cool. Cooper. It kind of ruined the brand. <laughs> That's a great face. I wish people could see your face then. That was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. And then uh, there was... Hi, do you remember High Karate? Yeah. God, we're really going down, we're really we're really going down a dead end. Down yeah. Here. Well, we're, we're, uh, high uh, Karate. For, for some people, High Karate will conjure up what, uh, Valerie Leon. Valerie Leon. Leon. Yeah, uh, yeah. But, uh, no, I know that. <laughs> I do know that. Yes, I do. I've done. I. That. Oh gosh. Val was doing a a, a tour. I. I, I I know Val right. reasonably well. And she, well, she was doing a tour on cruise ships. She was doing <laughs> right. a tour on cruise ships and she was going to be doing some acting classes for the, for the t people on this right. round the yeah. world cruise okay. or something. Okay. And then she did an evening with Valerie Leon, which she probably yeah. talked about that time with on the Bond movies and, and stuff. Yeah, so to back. Yeah, see that's um, you know you can still buy it. You can buy it. You can, can buy it you? if you go online. You can buy this great huge three hundred vat, three hundred <laughs> liter vat, vat of, of tobacco, of tobacco right. for about twenty quid. But if you, but literally, if you are drowning yourself in tobacco, 
I, I imagine, you know, wholesale is the way to go. Well, I think we come full circle there because yeah. if you drown yourself in tobacco and walk down the street, you look round, you'll find about 50 cats following you. <laughs> so, um, but, yeah. it, but it is a very evocative smell and, I, and, yeah. I, and I, it's one I still like. Yeah, um, yeah. But, but we, we got onto this because of the chat, didn't we? So I did oh, like yeah, chat, Planner, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Um, which is one of their, uh, yeah, their chosen. Own. Right. fragrances which I do like very yeah, much yeah. yes and um, I'm trying to remember the name of the other one now Flanner is one I can't remember I can't remember the name of the other one but, but they're both nice from a from a, a sort of going out point of view then uh, again trains roundabouts trains uh, that, that, that sort of, I mean uh, that's pretty good Trains are fairly universal. There's always something irritating, I think, about the trains. About train. It's hard. There is if you travel on the Hastings line. Yeah. <laughs> and um, uh, occasionally, uh, if I'm if I'm uh, in if I'm flush, I yeah. might travel from Rye up to Ashford and then up to London on the high speed. Right. Oh, which, okay. is, which is quicker. I mean, yeah, it depends yeah. which bit of, bit of London you're visiting, but it costs so much. Yeah. And um, that's incredible. And they've they've hacked about with the service, and now there's very few trains that run on that line. And and um, who wants to be stuck in the waiting room at Ashford International for uh, two hours? No. Of a night. No. Nobody. No. No. For sure. So um, I've got quite a fondness for a Hastings line actually. Yeah. Because it kind of goes through all all the areas I used to go through. Right. Okay. When I was a kid, and we used to go down to Hastings and and be louts. Yeah. On the beach. Yeah. Quite right. It's a good. It's not a bad beach to be louty on. I no. think Hastings. Well, we never went to Bright. We never really liked Brighton because you could right. get to Brighton by train. Yeah. In Tommy Drills back in those days. Yeah, you can't Tommy so Drills. easily you can't now. now. Yeah, yeah, you have to. I think you go. I think you go via Wales. Yeah, yeah. And out yeah. or somewhere. Yeah. Uh, but, it feels so, like but it. But Brighton was always it. a Londoners' resort. Right. Okay. Hastings was where. Hastings, Eastbourne. Yeah. Uh, that, and that was sort of our. Yeah, patch. that's fair. So. That's fair. Mm. Oh, I like I like Hastings. It's um, Hastings oh. is earthy. Yeah, I've got no. some fond memories of being in Hastings. Some not so fond actually, but mm. you know. Some, My friend something. David Austin, who had the best haircut ever in the world. Official. He, yes, <laughs> official. He used to get his haircut at this place in Tunbridge, um, uh, which did feathered uh, nice. hair, and he had, he was kind of blonde, and he had feathered a feathered hairdo, which was. Kind of, you know, when you see someone with a head, well, you've got your, yes. Well, with it, with, with, with. well, when you back, when you look at someone with a hairdo and you look at their hair and you think, God, I wish I could I get my hair to look like that. Yeah. Well, David Austin's was like that. Oh, was it? Um, yeah. And uh, I went and tried to get one and came back looking like a failed Apache. <laughs> uh, and in fact, a fu funny story on this, if I, if I can. Uh, Please do. Long hair was very frowned upon at school right so i in my secondary school over the road over the road uh i had this failed apache long hair yeah. and the headmaster was always trying to get me to, to have it cut right and uh i'd been chastised so many times for not getting it cut that i i used to he used to make me go and pick litter up outside after school because I absolutely refused to get my my right. hair cut and um, uh, my mother in the end was brought into this and I said to I said to my mum he has me out there picking litter up after school because I won't get my hair cut and my mum who was funky she was great um, she said well I'm not having that yeah so she went up there and complained and had a uh, had a ding dong with the headmaster Excellent. about them picking on me for having long hair. Um, but I maintain to this day that if I'd had it a successful feather, right, instead of getting complaints and being made to pick up litter, which David Austin never was, curse yeah. you, David, <laughs> um, I'd have been I'd have had a much easier time. Yeah, it because feathered hair was funky. Failed Apache was not so much. Yeah, see, well. It's I know. See now, I just look at people and think, "I, I wish I could have." I don't. Ah, well, I look, don't get they, scientists invented something which means we can get our hair back. I oh, think it's really? a tablet or something you smear on yourself. And it used to be coffee shampoo. Caffeine, 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 caffeine. Yeah. Uh, do you shower in it or drink it? But, I don't know. But maybe both. But if we could 
have yeah. that hair back, would you? I, oh, that's a really good question, actually. Um, oh, I so haven't considered the possible, because I wouldn't wear a wig or anything. So I, I hadn't really. <laughs> you wouldn't do an Elton? No, I don't think I would. Sorry, not that Elton John wears a wig. Can yeah. I just point that out? No, not, not anymore. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> but uh, would Let's I think of somebody who clearly has got all his own hair, like Cliff? Cl so, yeah, um, Cliff. Yeah, um, oh, there's, there's so many good examples now. Um, would I? I think I would kind of. Uh, would, uh, no, I probably on balance, I probably wouldn't. Now, it, now it's gone. Now um, I'm um, frozen stiff years old. Yeah. I think it would look kind of ridiculous to yeah, look around yeah. in a full head. I know. I, but well, some people carry it off quite nicely, don't they? Yeah. Some. Now, one of my friends showed me a picture of Martin Lewis, the actor. Yeah. Uh, who I think is around about 75, 76, something. Yeah, could be. Late 70s now. And he looked absolutely amazing. All right. Sort of salt and pepper, but all, yeah. all his hair and what have you there. And I thought, well, if I could look like that, that. Right. maybe I'd consider it. Eight piece baker boy, I would say it's, that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's see? Kind of, yeah, yeah, it's good. It does. It, you, you do. I'm very carry it off. Cat. I look like yeah. my granddad now. Oh, my granddad mean? always. In fact, right. I've got my granddad's hat. Cat. Right, and does it fit? Yeah. Does it? Uh, right. I'm, I'm, because they say you take after your mother's father, don't right. they? Right. And he was, he was a slaphead like me. All right. So, <laughs> uh, not like my, my, um, yeah, my paternal. Family who all kept their hair, yeah, cursed yeah, them. Yeah. My brothers in Australia have got hair, right? So, what's that all about? Oh yeah. So, I don't know. so yeah. Yeah, I, I, I like mine. Is this is a Baker boy? Is it? I would say that's a Baker boy. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's there a you go. Piece Baker boy. You see, there it's you not go. just tailored. Mind you, I would never wear it that way round. No. Because I think the, you look like a bird. The, do you know what Eddie is? I'd used to say, don't you? That the, the um, there's a very tight curve between. Cool, hip and groovy, cool, hip and groovy, yeah. looking like a dickhead. <laughs> yeah. And you have to go round only one way from cool, hip and groovy yeah. to looking. You can, if you back, try and back into cool, hip and groovy from looking like a dickhead, <laughs> yeah. it doesn't work. Then you've had it. So yeah. doing like that, looking like a dickhead, doing yeah, it yeah. the proper way round. Cool yeah, hip it's just uh, probably only Samuel L. Jackson that can pull off that wearing it back to front and of still course. look. But, but, but then Samuel L. Jackson is, it doesn't get much cool hip and groovy. Well, it doesn't, does it? It doesn't. Right, I, I'm moving. Oh, I'd already, I'd already moved Is this moved something in. I said? I've no, been, no. Been, so Malcolm we, McLaren breath. No, yeah. I'd, that, that, you might have to qualify that statement with a, because uh, yeah. that, that was pre-recording the, uh, the... Just before we, we, we started this, we, we were yakking away talking about stuff and I, I happened to mention that Muriel, uh, Muriel Gray and I are doing a, an interview with Malcolm McLaren. I think it was for, I think it might have been Double Dutch. Oh, uh, the, his got, famous skipping Yeah, song. yeah, his skipping thing. And Muriel was sat one side of him and he was sat in the middle and we were in a tight three shot and very close together. And he had the most appalling dog food breath <laughs> and uh, and I remember I, I've never wanted an interview to be over as quickly as yeah. that um, afterwards I said to, I said to Muriel if I never see Malcolm McLaren again it'll be too soon <laughs> because all I could think of was pedigree chum because oh, that's, what, that's it, what his breath smelled like it, so was it sort of do you think it was cigarettes and booze and coffee I don't or? know what it was but it was <laughs> bloody horrible and, uh, yeah anyway Let's, let's, yeah. not, let's not dwell on that. Well, no, because uh, that's twice now you've had to think about that in the space of about an hour. Yeah, and it was probably uh, something you, you were pleased with. <laughs> but had you met Malcolm before in your Yeah, sort in of the early days, we, 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 we sort of vaguely knew him from the King's the Road days from the shop. Yeah, yeah. which uh, my, my, me and my mates used to go and hang about yeah. and be yobs. Yobs back in the day. Yeah. And was he sort of a nice chap to meet or...? Because he had he a was reputation, actually. didn't he? He did yeah, have a reputation. I mean, he, was all, he was all right with us. Yeah, right. it was fine. It was, yeah, just, yeah. it was just the dog food breath. I got. Dog food breath. And mm. Probably sounds like he wasn't so much fun if he was your manager. Maybe, I wouldn't but, have, no, I wouldn't have thought so. No. No. So, look, 
I now have the bowler hat we referred to earlier. Now it's been pointed out this is a slightly strange thing because we have a section in the podcast called Off the Cuff. We thought being that the it was called Get Shirty, um, that being having the Off the Cuff section where we get somebody to pick a pick a random subject for them to sort of then say, oh yeah, this, this is very annoying about this subject. So we thought we'd call it Off the Cuff as these things are and off the Sounds cuff, good but, to me. but we put all the little things for you to pick out of in a bowler hat which then doesn't work with the off the cuff as, as Adam Buxton kindly pointed out he was quite right he suggested which we will do attaching some subjects to a, the cuff of a shirt and then it really is off the cuff that's, that's a bit better isn't idea. it yeah. rather than off the cuff from a bowler hat but you still get the bowler hat, sir. Well, so. I, I quite like that because Laura and Hardy are my, my heroes. Oh, right. so, so pick, my pick something from the hat. I'm going to pick something from that. And what do I have to do when I So it? when you see it, it yeah. will ha- there will be a subject on there. Yeah. And then you have to think if there's something which gets you shirty about the thing that comes. Oh, my God. This is going to be so difficult. What if it's not? Okay. I'm just it might be something you've it. already talked about. In uh, which case, you've got to pick birthdays. it Birthdays. Ah, okay. Yeah. So uh, is there something... Um, yeah, uh, I'm not a big fan of, but I'm not a big fan of parties. Right, so I don't okay. like birthday parties. I don't like, I'm well known amongst my friends who now know never to bother inviting me to a party because I love, right. I can't bear them. Um, so for a party birth- for you or any party? Oh, any party. Right. I, I'm not a party person at all. Um, so birthday parties, um, my best friend Jackie, when I was at school, she came to my birthday party once, and I remember this is when I was very little. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I just want to point this out because <laughs> I don't come out of this story very well. <laughs> right. Um, she bought a present which I didn't like, <laughs> and I said to her, "Is that all?" Oh. Oh my God! Now it says something. I'm 65 years old. All right. You're that story well, has then. never left me. Really? To this day, right, it okay. haunts me. Is it the so one birthdays? That... That's what I dislike. I don't. I'm not so you're not a, not a party. No, birthdays can do. So one, what, what about a, what about a surprise party then? Is that your idea? My of worst absolute hell? nightmare. Right. Okay. No one will ever that knows me would, would you just ever do that. Turn to around, me. walk straight back out. Well, I'd probably be di- diplomatic. diplomatic, but I would hate you? it. Right. Okay. So I don't do parties. I don't do weddings. I don't do. I don't do anything where there is a gathering of people and a, a social aspect to it. I right. just hate it. Right. Yeah. Is it? Can you pinpoint why? Is it small talk? Probably goes back to telling Jackie Valley <laughs> is that all at my birthday? Yeah. Lesser, and she's one of my besties too. She still is. Right. Uh, we're still good friends. Now. I presume. I have, you, have you talked about it since? Then? No. I've right. Never, I've kept that. Well, I've kept are you out sh- the bag now, haven't I? Well, you have, but are you sure she even remembers? Um, she might not even remember. Jackie's what? tougher, one of the toughest people I know. So she, you could be carrying something for all those well, years that be. you didn't need to. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah, but even so, I'm not. I'm surprisingly. <laughs> I'm it's su- possible, but I'll. <laughs> I'm happy to continue. I'm to surprisingly carry it. unsociable. <laughs> Re- oh, no, I, I'm not yeah. unsociable as a person. Yeah, you know, I like dinner parties. Yeah. Oh no, I quite. I do like dinner parties. Right. At yours or going to other people? No, not mine, because I don't want to do the washing up and I don't right. want to empty the dishwasher. Okay. So, um, as we've already said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so dinner parties. No, out. Yes. Out. At, out at, at, a, at a nice restaurant somewhere. Right. Oh, somewhere, okay. Somewhere fabulous, like right. La Chapelle. Or, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, or, e- or even I like the Ivy. See, I know a lot of people don't, but but I do. Yeah. So I've got quite expensive tastes. Well, and why not? And, um, and why not? <laughs> the life's life's for the living, surely. Yes. Yeah. I think it comes from having my my youngest brother bunk off and go to Pat's Calf. Which right. used to be down the road. Down so, I was yeah. appalled when I found out my brother bunked off school. School, yeah. By the way. Did you, and I never, you never did. did. I was a good boy. All right. Oh, well mm. done. Yeah. I'm trying to think what, what would have been Pat's calf. Whereabouts that would have been. It, were, um, it, was, so yeah. it was just, well, down, anyway, the road it was just down the road from we'll here. Have to, uh, we'll have to look into <clears> it. I wonder if that's what Bliss turned into Cafe Bliss. Was it quite long? Long, thin. Cat. I never went in there, so I no, don't you know. never, you never, no, I never went, went in, in there. there. My brother did. Oh, okay. My, my little brother. He right. bunked off school. He was naughty. He was naughty. Yes, I was a good boy. Yes. <laughs> I can't imagine that. 
<laughs> yes, <laughs> apart from telling Jackie that I didn't like her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for raking, raking that, that up. up. I now shall Look. lose several nights sleep. Well, oh, will you? Yeah. yeah. See, that's what I'm like. I, I, I tend to revisit things, things I've said, or, you know, and that was one of the concerns <laughs> about doing a podcast, that I'd say something and then have to replay it for the rest of my life. Well, I think over that, and over. I, I, I hope that this one hasn't been too traumatic. It's been very years. I, I, I said you, bugger been once, very... and I said, "Oh no!" You see, I wouldn't worry about what, uh, what I said. I guess said, uh, yeah, but I'd I did worry a, about what well, I said. I, I did a, a a number of radio interviews for uh, on the BBC uh, when I, when my book came out, and one of them was a local radio station in uh, Essex somewhere somewhere out that way there, and. Um, before we went on air, that, that for some reason, the, the interviewer came on and said to me privately, she said, you won't, please, please promise me you won't swear. And, and I, I thought, well, but I'm from Tunbridge Wells. I'm from Tunbridge Wells, <laughs> don't you? I don't, I don't swear. swear. I think she thought I was going to go all the word and Channel 4. On right, the, uh, okay. Um, but, but it doesn't come naturally. Swear words roll off the tongue like a brick to me. All right, I'm, okay. not, I'm still quite nervous and of saying fart bum or knickers. Oh, wow. <laughs> I don't but they're all the best ones. For, yeah, well, <laughs> well, of course, I've never, ever said fart bum or knickers on the BBC. Ever? Because mm -hmm. you were on the BBC for a while, on the radio, weren't you? Well? I did. Oh, God, I did. Um, yeah. I did midweek. Midway. I interviewed Todd Carty. On, but right, okay. God, the first time I was on, I was interviewed as a guest. And right. then the, Peter, uh, uh, the producer, a guy called Peter Estel, phoned me up and said, w we really liked you be on there. Would you like to come on and interview someone on there? All right. And, and I did, and can you believe I did Radio 4 midweek wow. with Libby Purvis and Henry Kelly. And, um, of uh, going for gold fame, Henry yeah. Kelly. And uh, I, so I interviewed Todd. They got Todd Carty on. And was this out of EastEnders? East, oh, and, was this uh, EastEnders time, or was it? Was it Grange Hill? Uh, Tucker. Yeah. He was Tucker. Uh, yeah. Tucker Jenkins. I, yeah. I'm not sure if this was, if when did it? No, he probably oh, wasn't in EastEnders at the time. Yeah. But because um, he was the second Mark anyway, wasn't he in yeah. EastEnders? So I did that, and I mean, it was all right, but. But uh, I didn't want to do it anymore. Right. Lib uh, Libby and Henry didn't like this trappy little gobshite uh. turning up <laughs> on their show. I was probably more um, pirate radio than radio. Yeah, right. So uh, I didn't want to do that again. So no. that was me. That was my choice. I thought, no, I don't want to do this. No. And it's uh, has it been sort of the stage more since since uh, those days when i can yeah it has um and that's where i tend to do stuff now i mean yeah. I, I i kind of pick and choose a bit but all right um probably more than i should do yeah but yeah yeah that's where my 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 heart lies on the stage yeah, yeah. darling and what's uh, what's next for you Oh, oh God! You know what? I hate it when people ask me that. Sorry, sorry, right? No, that, no disrespect. <laughs> that's all right. We can, know, cut, we can cut that out. You for, <laughs> no, don't cut. You don't need to cut it out. People always say um, the two questions I hate are: um, "What have you done recently?" Yeah. Um, and what do you want to do next? Yeah. So I'm, I'm uh, uh, something fabulous. Yeah. Uh, that doesn't involve pantomime. All right. Um, I have eschewed pantomime. Right. Which, oh, was, you, which was which was odd because I started my whole love of theatre started with the pantomime right. in Tunbridge Wells at the Opera House when that used to be a theatre. Oh, uh, my, my, before it became a Weatherspoon. Yes, yeah, so I was dragged up. You know, in a pantomime when they drag the kids up on the stage. Yeah, yeah. And um, there's they filter them out and they always give out the goodie bag, the sweeties, and then they reach the last two. Yeah. And they've got no bags of sweets left. This is it was quite cruel actually. I don't know if they do that now. They'd probably right. be sued if they tried that yeah, one. Yeah. And they leave the two of you. Well, I was there up on stage with Alan Gale, who was playing Miffins in, in, in the opera. So it would have been about 1962, 1963. Something like that. I was about five, I think. And I was all over the place. I wasn't t paying much attention to Alan. Alan Gale is um, Peter Duncan's dad. His, right. It was his mum and dad that did the pantomimes in Tunbridge Wells. Oh, was Peter, it? Peter Duncan off Blue Peter, things yeah. of, of an age. And Flash Gordon. Uh, and Flash Gordon, yeah. yes, and and others. Yeah, yeah. 
how the hell did I get onto this? But, but anyway, I was on your saying, love of your love yeah, of acting. I was kind yeah, yeah. of looking. I was all over the place, looking at all this stuff behind the stage and the lights and the, and everything else. And um, and um, he tried to pair me off with this this girl, you know, saying, you know, right. did, did I want her to be my girlfriend? And whatever, right. <laughs> um, which I didn't. No. And um, and if you did that these days, you'd instruct your parents to sue them no, for no, harassment. No. <laughs> that's, um, that's harassment, that is. It is, but uh, he was a lovely man, and uh, um, that's where my great love comes from. But no. I don't want to do pantomime now. No. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not a pantomime type of a, uh, I've only ever been in drag once. Right. And that was on the tube. Oh, was it? Yeah, we did a we did a, a New Year's Eve show. I think it was a New Year's Eve show. It might have been a Christmas or New Year's Eve show. Well, maybe maybe it was Christmas, and we all got up in fancy dress. All right. And for some reason, I decided to do it as Murray Wilson. All right. I, what was I thinking? <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> so there are pictures going around of me in I sure drag, find. dressed as Murray Wilson, and Jules. <laughs> Jules, when he saw me, I've never forgotten Jules's face when I minced on. All right. And we did this thing with the crowd as they were coming in, me as Murray Wilson. And Jules wasn't wearing any fancy dress at all. All right. And, um, Dipped I, out. Yeah. All right. So we, we sort of did this awkward bit with me in drag and what have you there. And I thought, no, that is the one the and one only time. time. Uh, and never again. Right. So I won't do pantomime. I won't do dame. No. And definitely no drag. No, I'm no staying drag. butch. Yeah. Well, look, and on that declaration of, of butchness we will we'll wrap it up and I'll say, so I'll say thank you very much for taking the time to to talk thank to us and to me wittering oh no I've, I've loved it it's been great and uh, I'll, I'll look forward to um, talking to you again thank one you day. sir yes that's alright thank you very much thank you So apparently there's bad breath and then there's Malcolm McLaren bad breath. Who knew? So uh, a big thank you to Gary for being our guest. Uh, it was great to hear about a local lad making it to the bright lights of London. Uh, you can find out more about Gary at his website. We've put a link in the notes with the podcast. Uh, there are some great pictures there, including the uh, Mary Wilson drag outfit. Uh, we've also put a link to the Weather Girls performance and interview that Gary spoke about and um, a link to, to his Graveyard Rambles on YouTube, which are well worth a, a, a visit. And finally, uh, a little housekeeping from the Adam Buxton episode, uh, where I said you can't buy the Tunbridge Wells water from the Chaler Beach Spring uh, down there on the Pantiles in bottles. Apparently you can, uh, I've since been told. Amazing stuff. So uh, that just leaves me to say thank you again to Gary James for being a great guest, to Sam for keeping us on track, to Stuart Wilson for the recording, editing and producing of the podcast, and to Dat Hazza for all the wonderful music you hear on the podcast. Links to his channels are also included in the description. So until next time, try not to get too shirty. <laughs> <laughs>